audio. It's not. Boring. So yeah, cardio is not boring, guys. A lot of people think that it is, and that's probably because when they think of cardio, all they think of is running or cycling on a stationary bike or something like that. These things can be fairly boring, although I actually quite enjoy running, especially if I'm exploring new places. Point is that a lot of people get on a lot better with what we classically consider to be metabolic conditioning exercises. Things like battle ropes, heavy bag, tire flip, med ball slams, skipping, all these things will burn calories, they'll strengthen your heart, improve circulation, give you all the benefits that you want from you know, a regular bout of cardio, but at the same time, they're going to help preserve and even build muscle, they're going to improve your work capacity, and they can be a lot more fun and a lot more cathartic. A lot of people just don't consider that this stuff is an option or that it's available to them. So in this video, I'm going to discuss some of the very best metabolic conditioning exercises. I'm going to talk about what their unique benefits are, and we're going to explore how to integrate them into your workouts. So I'm actually going to start with an exercise that not everyone was going to have access to, but don't worry, the following exercises on this list are going to be much more available to people. I'm talking, of course, about the tyre flip, which recently, this nearby field of mine, someone's just jumped a load of tyres here, so it's awesome for me. What you're going to do is get down low as if you were deadlifting, then you're going to hoist the thing up by hinging at the hips, pushing through the legs. At the same time, you're going to curl with your biceps, then when it gets to the top, you're going to push it over. The nice thing about this right away is that it's a pulling movement and a pushing movement. The push isn't as intense as the pull, but when you get to that top position, you've got to push it over. You're still going to eventually feel it if you're doing it for high reps, which is something that you can do. Of course, it's a hip hinge. Of course, it's good for the legs as well. This makes it a form of resistance cardio, as are most of the things I'm going to cover on this list. And resistance cardio is great because on the whole, it spares muscles. Perfect to put at the end of a workout as a kind of cardio finisher. The other great thing about this move is that it's concentric only. What this means is that for the biceps in particular, you're shortening, you're curling, but you're never using the eccentric portion and lengthening. Whilst a lot of people praise the eccentric portion of movement for building more muscle, for building more strength, it's also the most fatiguing. This is what causes the most muscle damage, so you take the longest to recover from it. Because you're not lowering the weight at all here with your biceps, that means you can perform this over and over again without needing as long to recover for the biceps. This in turn makes it a fantastic way to get blood flowing to the biceps, particularly if you've just done a workout that targets the biceps, which can encourage more growth over time. This is something that Ross Edgley talks about. He has huge biceps and he used this exercise among others when training for his extremely impressive rope climbing feat, where he climbed like the distance of Mount Everest or something like that, I think. The fact that you're picking up the tire from the ground rather than lifting it from a raised position on top of two plates means that you have to squat and hinge down further than you would do for a deadlift. At the same time, the fact that you're not actually lifting the whole weight at any point means that it's relatively safe to use for higher rep ranges. Of course, though, you need to listen to your body, you need to start with a light weight, and you need to decide whether your focus is more on strength or conditioning. Now to go from something that not everyone has access to, to something that I think nearly everybody can use, next up is skipping. So I made a video recently on the benefits of skipping, so I won't go into huge detail now. Suffice to say that skipping not only burns loads of calories, and these are equivalent or greater to running, you can get a really good calorie burn in just 10 minutes. But at the same time, they're brilliant for working on your hand-eye coordination, your timing, your rhythm, training your brain, because of course you need to jump over the rope, you need to time that jump, and at the same time, if you're practicing and learning cool tricks, then it makes it far more engaging. This makes it immediately more fun, but at the same time, it puts your brain in a more plastic state, because when we're learning, that's when our training is truly effective. At the same time, this builds ankle stiffness, giving you that rebound ability when you're sprinting, and it teaches you to be light on your feet, which is absolutely fantastic for martial artists, boxers, etc. I can only basically skip. I'm not a fantastic skipper. I made a whole video on it, and I'm not a great skipper. That's the uh, audacity of the Bioneer. Check out Grant Stevens if you want to see someone who really knows how to skip. That said, I learned the basic skip really, really easily, and the rest is just bonus. The rest is just fun stuff to work on. Skipping is something that you can do anywhere. It's really easy to fit a skipping rope into a bag. And that brings me nicely to today's sponsor, Cross Rope. 
So cross rope makes skipping ropes, specifically weighted skipping ropes. Not necessarily like super heavy skipping ropes, which is a thing as well, but we're talking like in some cases a quarter of a pound up to like two pounds. And what these can do is add that little bit of extra resistance when you're skipping. So you're getting a bit of an upper body workout at the same time. In particular, it's great for the shoulders, great for the forearms. However, what it also does is it changes some of the other properties of the rope, such that it changes the speed of the rope, for example. And this is really cool for people who are learning tricks because this rope, for example, this is half a pound. And when I put this on, it slowed it down just enough that it gave me that extra control. And that way I can much better learn moves like the crossover, like the side swipe, like the double under. And these are things that I've tried and really struggled with in the past with faster ropes but this is perfect. On the other hand, really big heavy ropes make it difficult as well because it's hard to move them at the right speed. So you can find the perfect rope for you and they're just really, really well made. And a great thing about it is that when you wanna change the rope, you can just clip it in and out like that. I mean, when I saw that, to be honest, I was sold. The ropes are also super durable. They're made of a steel cable and then this is wrapped in a proprietary material of some sort. Basically means you don't need to worry about them degrading over time if you're skipping on concrete. They also don't get all tangled up like a lot of ropes do. And you get access to the Crossrope app which will guide you through workouts, help track your progress and generally ensure that you get the results you want so you're not just skipping aimlessly. There's also a 60 day money back guarantee. So if you're not sure if you're gonna be able to learn to skip or you're not sure if you're gonna like it, then you can try them. You can literally use them every day for those 60 days and send it back if you don't like it. And if you order now and you use the link in the description down below and the promo code Bioneer, you'll also get 15% off of any of the most popular sets on their site. So next up for you, we have battle ropes. So battle ropes are essentially are two big heavy ropes that you slam against the ground, sometimes using alternating arms, sometimes bilaterally. This is not only a great form of catharsis to vent some steam, it's also a brilliant form of cardio for burning calories that also challenges your muscles. And the great thing about this is it challenges in particular the muscles of the upper body. When we think about cardio, we think of cycling, running, jogging, all these things focus a lot on the legs. So to be able to get the same cardio for the upper body is actually really good. And especially when you consider that endurance and cardio they are domain specific, so you can build more mitochondria in your biceps, in your shoulders. So by using conditioning in these areas, you'll be able to improve your work capacity and your performance when it comes to things that utilize your upper body, such as martial arts training, for example. So you've just trained the shoulders, you've created lots of muscle damage, now you're sending loads of blood there to really encourage recovery and growth. Next up is heavy bag training, in other words, bag workouts, punching, kicking, hitting a bag. I highly, highly recommend that everybody try this form of training, even if you're a non-martial artist. A lot of people think that, you know, hitting a punching bag or even just shadow boxing is only for martial artists, but I don't think this could be further from the truth. It's a fantastic form of cardio. It's full body, using your upper body and your legs, you're bouncing around. It's a real tough cardio workout, but at the same time, it gives you lots to be engaged with. It's cathartic again, it's good fun. At the same time, you can work on your technique if you record yourself and play it back. I'm not great at hitting a bag. I've got lots of issues with my technique still. And it's something that I'm always working on. And whilst it's not a big focus of my training, it's something that I really enjoy and getting feedback from you guys and watching myself slightly improve over time. Again, it just makes training a lot more enjoyable. If you're someone who gets bored running on a treadmill and try hitting a heavy bag instead, you'll get all of the cardio benefits. Plus it's resistance cardio again, so you're also building muscle. If you're someone who finds running on a treadmill boring, then hitting a punch bag couldn't be further from that. And plus it's resistance cardio again, so you're building up your shoulders, your pecs, your triceps, even your lats, because you need to be able to pull that punch, pull that arm back quickly. You're building your rotational strength. So many workout programs lack anything for rotational strength in the transverse plane. This is why I recommend things like shop at throws with a medicine ball or wood choppers. But if you're kicking a heavy bag using a roundhouse kick, this is a massively rotational movement. And in fact, punching is a rotational movement. So it's fantastic for building strong obliques and for learning to move quickly and powerfully in that really important plane that we use all the time in our daily lives. Another fantastic option is the kettlebell swing. And I just made a massive video on kettlebell swings. So we won't go into it in a lot of detail right now. But kettlebell swings are a fantastic form of endurance cardio that really build powerful glutes, hamstrings, the whole posterior chain. They build a stronger back. They help you to jump higher, run faster. And this is what has led to them sometimes being described as having the what the hell effect because they improve so much stuff. They make people go, what the hell? Kettlebell swings are also just a really convenient exercise you can do anywhere. Just pick up a kettlebell, start doing swings. 
It does take a little bit of time to get the technique right. You want to make sure you're really engaging the glutes and not driving from your back or swinging up with your arms. But once you do this, they can have all those amazing benefits. You can use more of a hard style swing where you're exploding from the hips, really thrusting forwards and swinging that weight up and then waiting until it comes back down and catching it again. Or you can use a sports style swing where you kind of use a pendulum motion and let the weight guide you so that you're putting in less work and this allows you to do higher rep ranges. By allowing you to do longer sets, this type of kettlebell swing is actually superior probably for metabolic conditioning specifically, but I personally prefer to use a more hard style-esque version. Either way, using kettlebell swing at the end of your workouts is a great way to get the blood flowing, to burn calories, to improve your endurance and work capacity, but at the same time to improve your jump height and to build stronger glutes. I've also talked at length about med ball slams, and these are also fantastic for metabolic conditioning. Like skipping, like heavy bag work, med ball slams are actually really fun. You just slam the ball down into the ground, let it bounce back up, catch it, and repeat the process over and over again. Feels very cathartic. So I just accidentally reversed my car into a bollard when dropping my daughter off at preschool. It wasn't a huge dent, but it cracked the paint. And whilst the car wasn't brand new, it is the nicest car that I've ever owned, and I only got it a few months ago. And in terms of biomechanics, it's actually the opposite of an explosive vertical jump. Instead of being a triple extension, it's more of a triple flexion as you collapse the body. This is what you want to focus on. Bring yourself down at the waist as though you're doing the counter movement ready to jump. And then you slam the ball down at the same time. It also really works the lat, surprisingly. There are lots of variations that you can do with a med ball slam, and I made a whole video on it once again, so go and check that out if you're interested. <laughs> as someone who also talks about the brain on this channel, I feel I should mention this point that catharsis doesn't actually work according to the research. Finally, that brings me to one of my favorite protocols, and that's to do high repetition push-ups. You've seen me do this loads of times on the channel. Basically, I do these really high rep, explosive, bouncy push-ups, which don't include a full range of motion or particularly much control. It's more about pumping out rep after rep. Whilst there's definitely a time and a place for controlled, full range of motion push-up, and I'm not saying you shouldn't do that, there's also time and place for this kind of push-up, because it's fantastic for flooding the muscles with metabolites and blood, which is great for hypertrophy. If you've only got access to your body weight and you want to build big pecs, then this can be really good, as long as you maintain that continuous time under tension. At the same time, it makes you explosive and bouncy and powerful in that area. And when you get to those higher rep ranges, like the hundreds, hundreds and fifties, then you're actually getting a good cardio workout, a good conditioning workout at the same time. Perfect if you've just done a push day or a pec day, if you want to end on something that's going to really flood the area with blood. I also like to mix and match my push-ups. You've seen me do this too. I like to throw in different moves, whether it's a kick through, whether it's a burpee, whether it's an explosive jumping push-up, whether it's a handspring. And by combining these all together in these explosive flows, it makes the movement a lot more interesting. It might also have benefits for the brain and for learning in general because it benefits from the interference principle and by mixing things up, it's just more of an engaging challenge. You can actually express yourself and be more creative. So those are some of my favorite picks when it comes to metabolic conditioning workouts. Some of the best ways to end a workout if you want to get a cardio finisher in there. Some of the best ways to improve your endurance and your work capacity and your VO2 max and all that good stuff. Of course, you can always combine all these things and make a Metcon circuit. This way, not only are you mixing things up even more, making it more fun and more interesting, you're also targeting all the different muscle groups and you're gonna get the blood flowing around the body more because you have this shunting effect where the blood has to pull first in the upper body when you're doing your battle ropes and your punches and then down to the lower body when you're doing things like kettlebell swings or skipping. And by doing this, your heart works harder, you burn more calories and you improve your overall circulation and your ability to exert yourself in lots of different ways. As we know, life doesn't throw things at us in these kind of convenient sets and reps. We don't have blocks of just push day. We have a mixture of things coming at us all the time. We need to be able to adapt to that. And a Metcon circuit combining these different things is a fantastic way to achieve that. So I hope you found this video useful and interesting, guys. If you did, then please leave a like and share it around. That would help me out immensely. Let me know in the comments down below what your favorite metabolic conditioning workouts are. And of course, this is far from a comprehensive list. If it was, it would be, you know, hours and hours long. Some other top picks that didn't quite make the cut are the car push or truck push or sled push. Fantastic exercise. Another one that's a little bit tricky to do. JC Santana did a brilliant video on that on this channel. I also love my bag drag, which I did on my recent athletic exercises video. This is one where you crawl and drag a bag. In fact, crawling in general can be better metabolic conditioning than you might think. Rucking, carries, anything involving a sandbag. If you like this kind of training, it looks not just aesthetics, numbers on a few lifts, but all round performance, mobility, strength, cardio, even brain training, then you might enjoy my ebook and training program, Super Functional Training 2.0, which comes with over two hours of video instruction. I'll leave a link to that in the description down below. Thank you so much for checking it out. Either way, thank you so much for watching this video, guys. Thanks again to Crossrake for sponsoring it, and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.